Welcome back. My name is Delmico L. Cunningham, better known as Dr. Media. So in our last video, we looked at bringing our textures and our models here into Unreal. And we talked about that our textures are, they're actually, you know, working pretty well. Uh, everything is mapped on there the right way. All those things are working. But we also want to be able to get our uh, normal maps because normals will, do, will go a long way into helping everything not be so flat because right now this looks just like an image um, you know plastered onto my object which it is but we want to uh, bring some depth some sense of depth to this so we can use a program called shader map shader map Pro is actually a really great little program. I think this, I think that right now, let's look this up. I believe Shader Map Pro is uh, under a hundred bucks. Let's see. I want to give you the right website for it because it's a great program. So, Shader Map Pro is. $49.95 and if you go to shadermap.com you can actually grab a copy of Shader Map Pro. This is a great program for being able to bring take your images and be able to generate normal maps and ambient occlusion maps and height maps right out of or right from your um, your actual diffuse maps. So we do have our diffuse maps. We have all of our diffuses that came out of Max. So we have all those diffuse maps for us to be able to use. And what I want to do is I'm just going to take those diffuse maps and drag and drop them right onto the right onto what we have in here inside of uh, Shader Map Pro. So this is Shader Map Pro's kind of start screen. So I'm going to do the capsule first. So let's just grab our capsule texture and drag and drop it. And when you drop it onto Shader Map Pro, it starts to generate out your other map. So you can see it's rendering. And there's the map that I've gotten. And so this has now given me my version with the normals. So you can see, look at that. Look at those really nice normals that are on this now. So now I've got some differentiation. I've got some really nice normals. So this is going to go a long way in... Uh, actually giving me a model that looks more realistic. I've got specularity happening. So how does this work? So what we can see is that your diffuse comes in here and it's in the first slot up here. From your diffuse it generates a displacement map. The displacement in turn generates the normal, the ambient occlusion, as well as your specular maps. So your, your uh, displacement map is kind of driving everything else. So some things we need to look at for our displacement. When I click on these different maps, you'll see that my options change for each map. So for displacement, you can see I can do auto edge. I can also change the input. So I can choose green as my input. And since it's a grayscale image, it's not going to really make much of a difference. So I can do blue. I can also do red plus green. I can do red plus blue, green plus blue. I can average all three of them, use the alpha. I'll just use red because right now it's a grayscale image. So. Uh, we can turn up the low detail and get more low detail generated out for this. I can bring down my low detail. You can see it's giving me, so I can go for more, maybe for more mid detail. I bring the mid detail down. All right, and I can also scale my height pixels. So bringing that down kind of lessens that effect. And I can do slow scale and then I've got a post blur so I can actually blur this a little bit. So you can see I can blur it out. So I'm just going to bring my blur back down because I don't want to blur out the details. So you can, you can get a little bit of softness to that so it doesn't seem so hard. Maybe two. Yeah, I think I like that. So, and then you can also do your normalize on this. And then you can do a fast preview and you can preserve the alpha. You can invert the mask. So when I move here to my normals, 
you can see in my normals, I can just basically, I can just change the intensity of my normals. So I can turn my, my normals up, turn them down. Kind of have that. I can sharpen my normals if I wanted to and preserve the alpha. And then you choose which channel you want. I'm going to use the same channel because it's basically using the same thing. So my ambient occlusion right here. For ambient occlusion, I have my ray count. So how many rays I want to use. I'm going to bump this up to like 64. And because I want more rays so I can get some softer ambient occlusion detail. And then the length of my rays is like 5.0. And I might turn that up to like 10. I want to try to get as much detail as I can get. And it's rendering it again. You see it right here, it's rendering. And I can preserve alpha. I think that looks good to me. And then my specularity. So my spec, I can change the detail on my spec. If I bring this down, you can see. And up here is a little light. This light lets me kind of move this light around. And you can actually add, if I hit the little plus box right here, I can add additional lights to get some other stuff going on. And you can also click on the color swatch right here and change the color of that light, which is actually kind of cool. So I can change the color of that light. I can take away a light. I can also change its intensity of that light uh, and do a lot of little cool things with that, with that particular light. So I can come in here and, you know, change that light around and do some really cool things with that light. So let's say like this is going to be this. So I can also change my brightness with my specularity. So I can change the brightness. I can change the contrast of this. And this is all feeding into the specularity of my object. And then maybe I want to give more detail. And then bring the level of it down, maybe. Alright, so that's kind of what it wants to generate for me, which is good. I actually like that. So to get all these maps out, all I want to do at this point is come here and click on the little all, or I can hit control M and that will save all my maps. What's really cool about this is, is that wherever your maps are, when you drop it into the interface, all of your maps that you export will go to the same exact place. So that's kind of cool. So I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna make a, no, I don't wanna save the current project. And I'm gonna do my next one. So that was that. And I wanna get, Let's see if this is a different one. Let's make sure. So I'm going to leave all these other ones at default. I just want to get the maps out of there. Okay, that's an old one. So let's get the door. Let's get the door going on in here. So boop. So I can replace existing source. Yes, I'm going to replace that source. So you don't have to make a new project. You can just drag them, drag them into the source window right here. And it'll regenerate. And you can see this is my door that I had and it looks like things are going good with that I'm gonna save all of those and I'm gonna get my stairs right here yes replace the existing map let it generate so this is a really great program because it can take your just your 2D, your 2D textures and give you some 3D kind of effects. Like your normals are, you know, you can calculate those in other programs, but not a lot of programs let you use the actual map, the color map itself to generate uh, these kind of normals and things like that. So that's always kind of cool to be able to do. So let's make sure it's saving out these things I think it is actually maybe let's make a new project so let's make sure I just want to make sure that these guys are getting saved out as I save them and details let's just keep this going so those are there 
let's do my door drop that on here and let it render takes a while but there it goes so let's save all of those and all those are in there and I'm just doing a new project just so it doesn't save on top of anything that I already had alright so gonna do this guy again so I think I think by just replacing that it was doing some weird stuff so I just want to make sure that it's not doing weird things so that's all working so get new get my stairs drop the stair guy in here and get this for the stairs and just say save all these are all saved out let's do it new one more time and do it for the wall let's get something generated off of that wall over there so we got the wall so it should give us some pretty decent normals let's see let's see what it does yeah actually it does give us pretty decent normals so you can see some things happening on the wall back here and I've got normals happening on those walls and it looks like almost like these normals are pressing out instead of pressing in which that's kinda weird so let's go to our normal and let's invert our normal and see there we go yeah so that normal's working right now so that's pressing in instead of out and save all and I just want to do this one more time for my actual uh, original capsule because I think that my capsule images might have gotten saved on top of so let's just make sure they were not and save all so the nice thing about this is as well is that you whatever size your your diffuse texture is all your other textures will be the same size so I know that all my stuff is square so everything is good so I've got those made I can close down shader map at this point so I'm saying no I don't need it 